Hey guys, thank you so much for sending me the questions. I got a lot more questions than I expected on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So, Chantel, my wife Chantel, say hi. Hi. Helped me to answer them as like an interview, you know? All right, you ready? Yes. Okay. So, a lot of people mm -hmm. were asking questions like, when did you learn to play piano? When did you start taking lessons? Mm -hmm. How old were you? So, I thought it would maybe be good to yeah. just start with a quick little story time on how you started playing piano. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I started playing piano when I was six in Korea. My older sister Min Young started playing, I think, something on this like a mini keyboard that we had. And I thought she was like the coolest ever. So I started playing chopsticks on the keys. I didn't take really any piano lessons until college. So I learned a lot from YouTube, watching YouTube videos, um, kind of following different artists and picking up different skills here and there. All right, next question. What do you do when you get stuck musically and feel like you're in a stale place? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, if I'm stuck in my music making, that means I'm not listening listening to enough music. So I have to go back to the scores or music different compositions and arrangements that I really enjoyed and listened to them again and explore new music. So the more I listen to it, the more inspirations that I get. And also, um, I don't know, I just, I think about what people want to hear and what will help them. So when I think about it, like, I have more of the desire to do it because it's not just about me, but helping people as well. Cool. How did you and your wife meet? Oh. Well, maybe it's your time to talk <laughs> What? About. This is your Q&A, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, how did we meet, Chantel? We met at Wheaton College as little baby freshmen. <laughs> yes, we met in college. She was a freshman, I was a freshman, and we had no idea what we were doing, and we needed help from each other. <laughs> so, uh, we started dating in the first, like, a month into the freshman year. Mm -hmm. So it kind of happened rather quickly. <laughs> and I got to meet Chantel's parents and the entire family like in October and officially asked her out. Mm -hmm. And it was like the most awkward thing ever <laughs> the entire year, the first year of our dating. It's really awkward. <laughs> That's an understatement. Another That's story for another time. Another story for another time, yeah. yes. <laughs> Next question. Is music your full-time career? Mm. Yes, um, it is my full-time career. I've been playing music kind of full-time since I was in college too. I was a music director at different churches. Um, I performed a lot for different restaurants, yacht club or weddings and you know different gigs. Um, I started my online presence my, maybe like two and a half years ago and that's when things kind of picked up online as well. So I work with a few different companies selling my sheet music and then all my music is on different streaming platforms mm -hmm. and iTunes, mm -hmm. you know, Spotify. So yeah, coffee break, coffee break. Do you have any advice for a college student studying music? Mm. Oh, good one. So I studied music composition in college for four years. Um, and with that, I also studied classical music and jazz music as well. I would say the biggest, biggest, I guess, advice I can give it to you is know your reason why. And I know people say that, um, and we all know it's important, but if you don't know why you're, you, why you're doing music, you're gonna get lost. Like, what's the purpose of you doing music, right? For me, it's all about God. Like, I want to glorify God and I want to share my music with people so that they may be able to worship God in that similar way as well. But know the reason why. Who are you trying to serve? What is it that you're trying to achieve through music? So I know that's kind of like a big question, philosophical, which <laughs> I don't mean to be that way, but mm -hmm. it's just something that I realized how important it was for me, so. Can I tack on? To yeah, please question? tag, yeah. So we were both music majors in college. I was um, majoring in vocal performance and at Wheaton that meant 
like my training was classical vocal, so like mm -hmm. opera, art song, that kind of thing. And I would say to a music student, don't be afraid to explore other avenues. Mm. Um, if I had just taken the classes that like I had to take, I would have just been doing classical voice, just been doing music theory. Um, but sophomore or junior year, I started taking jazz vocal lessons and I mm -hmm. think that was one of the best decisions I made at college because mm -hmm. I just like it reignited um, kind of like my love for singing a little bit and just let me have a ton of fun. Um, but it was never something I thought I could do. Yeah. So explore. Explore. <laughs> so a lot of people asked, what's your favorite worship song? Oh, okay. So I, I want to say the song changes almost like every week or every <laughs> other week, but there's one song that that has been so meaningful to me since even high school mm -hmm. and it's actually called Rush no it's called Peace Be Still by Rush of Fools and it's like I think they're from maybe uh, some European country I don't mm -hmm. know where they're actually from I actually did talk to them on Instagram once but they, that song meant so much to me in high school like, there were so many unknown things in my life and God used that song to give me so much peace. I still listen to it very frequently. Uh, whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed or something, it's that song that I go back to. It's so funny because it's not even on Spotify. Like, it's kind of like, <laughs> no one knows the song. So, it's kind of like my own like treasure song that I hold um, deeply in my heart. So. Mm. Yeah, I, I love this one. Look it up. Peace Be Still by Rush of Fools. Next. So you have a lot of um, budding pianists following you. What pianists? Budding. What like, does that mean? Like budding, like just learning. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The beginner <laughs> pianist. So you have a lot of beginner pianists following you. Yes. And um, I know you don't do tutorials yet. But mm -hmm. a lot of these beginner pianists mm -hmm. were wondering if you had any exercises you could give them mm. to teach them how to have their hands play yeah. independently oh, from each other. Oh, that's a really good question. I, I, I remember when I was young, just beginning to learn, like I, it didn't make sense how like people played left hand and right hand at the same time, playing melody and harmony and bass line, like it just seemed impossible. So, you know what? I will put together something like a PDF. It's kind of hard to explain it all in this in this short tutorial, but I mean, in this, <laughs> in this short Q&A, uh, but I would love to share that with you. It's not as difficult as you think it is, so you will get there. Where are you from and where do you live now? I'm from South Korea originally and I now live in Pitaski, Michigan. It's a small, we show our hand as like, a, <laughs> it's a weird thing that we do in We're Michigan. Mitten. Mitten, yes. Uh, We're up like here, like way up north, really close to Canada. Actually we're not here, we're like right here, on the water. Yeah, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, so we are by the uh, Great Lake, Michigan. Great Lake, Michigan? We are on Lake Michigan. We're on Lake Michigan. It's great though. <laughs> so yeah, we're in a small town um, called Pitaski. It's kind of like a tourist area, so a lot of people come here for the summertime and population just like triples for the mm -hmm. summertime but yeah it's a beautiful place we love the nature and we love the community community that we are involved in so mm -hmm. yeah okay so now kind of jumping off that question mm -hmm. knowing that you grew up in korea mm -hmm. does your family still live in korea and if yes how often do you get to see them oh yes my family everyone lives in Korea. All my extended families, I'm the really only one that lives here. Although my younger sister is going to the high school that I went to, uh, in a small Christian school right now. But I get to see my family maybe once a year, um, at least once a year, because when we got married three years ago, we made that as our commitment. At least once a year, we're gonna put in every effort to make it happen to see them at least once a year and spend about like three weeks 
Yeah. So it's been consistent. We've been going back to Korea every summer for about three weeks and it's yeah. been amazing. We love our family there. We love our Korean culture and food. Chantel loves Korea food sometimes more than I do. <laughs> I don't know about she, that. <laughs> she craves it. I think you do. What is your process like when writing a new piano arrangement? How long does it take you? Mmm, good question. It depends on how much effort I want to put in actually. <laughs> but just because I put in more effort doesn't mean it's gonna turn out better. So that's an important thing to know. I would say in general, average speaking, I think it takes me about maybe like uh, five days mm -hmm. to kind of write it, arrange it, practice it, and like finish the sheet music and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if it's really involved, it can take longer. Right. So it really depends. Right. So your videos like Oceans or mm -hmm. Reckless Love, those yeah. were much longer. It's orchestrated right. and there are a lot of moving parts with the music video and everything. Like we have to haul out the grand <laughs> piano out on the frozen lake. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of logistics that go into it. So but even just musically, the fact that you're yeah. adding uh, like strings on top right, and you're right. orchestrating it, that yes. process involves other people. Yeah, for so sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially if I'm outsourcing and collaborating with other musicians, um, other engine like music engineers, mm -hmm. uh, it can definitely take up to maybe a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Did playing piano come naturally to you? Um, I think the desire was natural for me. I wanted to play because once again, I I, I liked that my older sister played. And I think I did enjoy being on the stage and being able to share. And um, when I saw a piano, I did want to be on the piano to be able to play and express myself. So I think in a way it did come naturally for me, but skills wise, I had to put in a lot of effort. So I don't think I'm like a genius like some other people out there. I don't need to be a genius. I just love doing what I do for other people. So. Um, Hope that answers your question. Oh, I think you're a genius, so... Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some tips you have when learning a new piece? Hmm. When you learn a new piece, you have to listen to it many, many times because you gotta make it kind of like a part of you in a way. Like, it gotta come naturally. And the times that I try to compose or arrange something without having like a good vision behind it, it becomes so much more difficult. So listen uh, to it many, many times and then figure out the chord structure. That's probably the second thing. Just know that what kind of mood it is in, what kind of chord structure, what kind of chord progression is going on and get used to the melodic lines and then put them together. Boom! Make it sound so easy. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Why don't you have more subscribers? Oh! Hey! I don't know! <laughs> hey, I'm pretty close to 50,000, so that's not bad! Yay! But I don't know, sometimes I get comments like, Why don't you have million subscribers yet? I'm like, good question! I don't, I don't know. know! But um, it's really not about the numbers to me. I, I genuinely like, I learned this from my dad, but my dad is not about the numbers. He's a pastor in Korea. He doesn't have the desire to just grow the church. He wants to make sure to take care of the people that he has been granted with. So I want to have the same mentality. Even if I have like, like 100 subscribers, I just want to give great value to you guys and make you happy and help you life better. If that makes sense. Help you life better? Yeah, that's a thing that I just came up with. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> New catchphrase. Yeah. Help I you life you. better. <laughs> that's definitely not gonna catch you on, but it's okay. Who knows? Who maybe. knows? Maybe. Coffee break! Okay, next. Hi. Come on, Sean. Sean, let's go. Do you have perfect pitch? Oh, I think I might have relative perfect pitch, but I do not have perfect pitch. My actually, my younger sister has perfect pitch. She she can literally hear anything. Like you can ding a wine glass, and she'd be like, "Oh, that's F sharp," or whatever. And I'm like, "Wow, that's cool." But I don't have perfect pitch. I mean, I'm pretty close though. Sometimes Chantel would play random notes and be like, "Hey, what note is that?" I'd be like. 
um, A flat, and then she's like, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I like how when you quote yourself, you make your voice lower, like, um, A flat. <laughs> Just when you talk to me. <laughs> yes. So yes, I, no, I don't have perfect pitch, but I think I'm. I have relative perfect pitch. So which means if I I do have like I can hum out C or A. C. I think that's C. It's a piano Come on, piano. Here, I'll hit C. For C. You. Mm. Okay, that's pretty close. So based on that, I can, you know, scale like the Remi Fa Sol Ashida or whatever. And I can, I can choose what pitch it is. So yeah, I think I have relative perfect pitch. Cool. I don't, just in case you're wondering. Yeah, everyone was wondering that. <laughs> okay, last question. Last question. Last question. Mm. What do you think is your biggest blessing from God that you're most thankful for right now? Mm. That's a good one. Oh man, I'm genuinely so thankful for my wife. Um, good answer. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I pray every morning and I thank God for my wife every morning and she's the biggest gift in my life. So, so sweet. very, very thankful for her. She makes me nice dinner. So I mean, <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate each one of you and you guys have been just so wonderful and supportive and I just love you guys. So if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment below and we will make another Q&A next time and answer hopefully more of the questions from you. See you guys. Bye. Bum, 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 bum. Oh yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Are we awkward? Yep. Oh shoot, nothing's changed. <laughs> <sighs>